J360 Radio. Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome to the J360 Mini Bites here on J360 Radio, hosted by JM Brady. I am your host, JM Brady. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's a new week and everything. <laughs> yes, 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 and it is about time. As you can see, we're still sticking with the um, usual schedule of how we do things. We start up always on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern. You know, I've been sitting here thinking about changing the timeline a little bit. I have been, and uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, hmm, probably bump it up to 7, maybe. Um, we'll have to see how things go as we keep working what we have here. And you guys usually know that the J360 shows are popping off at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern anyway. I like to think you did, anyway. <laughs> yeah, let me go ahead and make sure we're sounding really, really good. Don't want to be clipping, you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, a few things. Uh, let's see. It's not Jams 98 this week. Nope. This is not a Jams week. That's next week. But submissions are open. So anybody who wants to submit to J360 Jams, you know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, I'll happily tell you. Submit your two tracks. they got to be MP3 or Wave to J360 Radio. No, not J360 Radio. Well, actually, yeah, submit them to J360 Radio, but they got to be submitted to J360Jams at gmail.com, you know? And make sure the music is made by you, and then make sure, like, you know, you have a link of sorts that you would like to see grow. It could be a Bandcamp, could be a Spotify, could be a SoundCloud, could be a YouTube, you know, Apple Music, whatever you want to use to grow yourself. I mean, let me know. You can even have a link tree for all your links if you want to. That stuff is actually valid for you to go ahead and submit. That way we have a complete submission and it needs to be in before next Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern for consideration. All right. The Thursday before a Jams episode at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern is a deadline. Always. We have to maintain that deadline, people. That's what we do here. But I will say this much. Um... We have been killing it so far. We've been doing incredible with the work that we have been presenting. And then not to mention, like, 97 was so damn good. <laughs> can, you, can you believe that we are that close to 100 episodes? And not only that, like, here in the fifth season, we already got three episodes in the can. That is achievement. I am very proud of it to see, like... All this stuff, the steady growth, and more and more people are coming in. More of the labels are paying attention. Uh, a lot of y'all are growing. And then not to mention, there will be a new Jams TV episode. It'll happen in Monster Fest and in October. And I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. But, you know, as per usual, we need those 10 music videos to go ahead and get the ball rolling. And I want to see some of you guys bring your best, your best and darkest. I was about to say brightest, but, you know... Bring about the dark stuff if you'd like to. Or, you know, at the end of the day, I can find a way to fit you in. That's always cool. Like, it, Jams is growing. The J-Man Show is steadily growing. And the Mini Bites, of course. Like, a lot of y'all are paying attention to it. The Mini Bites are your news and your insider information for J360 Productions. And, of course, like, what's going on in the world. So, you know, you get all that in a short format. So don't forget, like, why these th the big three here are in circulation and all. And I know a lot of y'all have been paying attention. Yes, the Amazon podcast outlet is all set and ready to go. Yep, so that means for anybody that's been really looking at my socials lately, the channels are set for these three shows. So you can go ahead and follow them, download, whatever you need to do. If you listen on Amazon Music, we are right there for you. <laughs> I think the only one that's kind of questionable for regarding my content anyway is Spotify. And that's all because of some crazy, tiresome bullshit over there. But anyway, anyway, I want to see you guys grow. That's why I like, I'm like, hey, I ain't worried about J360's radio's growth over there. But I am concerned about a lot of my musical friends and a lot of artists that I haven't met. Like, where are you guys at in that whole thing? You know? And uh, speaking of which, though, that you know, with growth comes a lot of strangeness, man. And you see, like, it, it's been weird because as I always work on the content here and I'm working on other shows and newer things and stuff, usually I would know the ins and outs of the rules. I, I set the rules. I set the standards and all that stuff. But when it comes to other people, like, for some reason, either they don't read the paper or they don't listen to instructions or whatever, but... 
some of y'all be weird with the shit, man. I mean, like, there was one time this guy sent me his whole discography, and then he got nerd to talk to me about two recommended tracks. And then I was like, well, then send the two recommended tracks. Don't send me all this stuff. You know, and what's it makes it even worse, he started diving into this whole thing about, like, I needed to talk to a re another representative of his, which I never talked to another representative of his until this happened. You know what I mean? He didn't do it in his primary letter or anything. So by seeing that, I ended up barring him from the show, and I said, like, to hell with this. Nope, you're not on the show. And what's funny is, too, because like, it seemed like everything was coming together, and then he was trying to say, like, are you saying I'll be aired, JM? I will be on the air? And I was like, you know, a lot of people would just say thank you, man. You know what I mean? It's like, just say thank you. Like, sometimes, like, high-context relationships are not for me. And I, and I always say this, like, I, what, what is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, when I say you're on the show and you get an email back from me usually, or, like, a lot of y'all will hear me when I tell you that you're on the show and all that stuff, and you get a copy of the flyer and all, but what's weird is is that there are people out there who will go that extra mile, and then they'll start liking all my stuff on TikTok or any of these socials out here thinking that'll get them in. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not how it works. You see, this is best showcasing you. I got enough things out there showcasing me. What, what 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 the hell are you doing? This is about your music and your growth. Don't be kissing my ass. Go ahead and showcase like what you can do. Like, are you ready to show these and air these to the people out there? You know what I'm saying? But it's funny though, because people will pull this kind of crap saying, I don't think I'll be qualified for any of these things. I'll be the damn judge of that. You know what I mean? If you got two recommended tracks and all that kind of stuff, send them. And then what's weird to me also is when people start using genre as a way to eliminate themselves from jams. I, I don't know. I'm not synthwave. Jams hasn't been a synthwave show for three friggin' years, man. We're on the fifth season now. <laughs> Forget it. Maybe the first season was synthwave because, you know, I was still trying to figure out how far I was going to go with it. But 27 episodes afterwards, I'm pretty sure I know what the hell I'm doing. And I made sure with second season on in, you know, we did not go into one genre. Because you're going to miss the whole big picture. You know what I'm saying? So please, please, please. If you have questions, ask them. If these tracks are ready to go. If you, if you can't share that track with your mama. And if you can't put that track on your Spotify. Maybe you shouldn't send it to me. You know what I mean? Now I've had people do their premieres on jams. I've had people do like, you know, secret songs and all that kind of stuff. And that's entirely up to you. That's your call. But it's like at the end of the day, it's invalid when you start adding stuff. Because I'll sit right there and I'm like, who made that injunction a rule? Like, like, did I see that? No, no, no. This is some crap in your head cannon. No, 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 no. I, I, I work on the show every week, guys. Like, it may not air every week, but I still work on it. You see what I'm saying? I would know the ins and outs of it. Just like every damn show that I work on and stuff, I know it from top to bottom because I built the damn thing. You know, nobody would know the rules any better than I would. It's just, it's amazing how we get to this point about stuff. But, you know, there are a lot of people out there that do not regulate their stuff. I regulate mine. And there are a lot of people out there who will let anybody in to perform anything. Which, uh, <laughs> oh my god. Have you seen the Olympics this year? I mean, honestly, I think the Olympics were great. I think the showcase for the Olympics was awesome this year. But what was really, really weird was when we got to uh, breakdancing. Now, I don't know what it is with... You know, certain Caucasians in the world. But, you know, like I said, I, I love my white women as much as I love my black women and my Hispanic women and my Asian women. And then some. But the thing about it is, why the hell do you have to ruin dancing? I, You know, like, years ago, Nicole Arbor ruined tap dancing when she did that stupid music video that was a parody of um, Donald Glover's song, This Is America. Because honestly, she said it was the woman's movement, but it was, it was stupid. And when you know like certain people start getting that whole thing that, I'm, I'm making a statement. Oh, it might not be the right intention of your whole thing. Unless your idea was to piss off everybody. And she did. And now I'm sitting here looking at breakdancing. Because breakdancing is awesome. You know what I'm saying? There is just a certain class and a style to it. Just like when it comes to rap music, hip hop, or anything in general. 
And uh, sometimes stuff is kind of tone deaf here in America because people don't even know how to celebrate hip hop. I remember when hip hop was starting 50 and the whole damn movement of that was cringe. But moving forward into the Olympics again, you know, you got to see everybody in their best and brightest. The, the breakers that made the cut that came in and all. And you see them just killing it, knocking it out. And you see this pretentious um, ballroom dancer who calls himself Ray Gun come up there and doing all the damn T-Rex shit and all that crazy stuff. I was like, what is this? And of course, uh, like whether she, um, whether you catch the videos or not of her saying that, I, I did what I did. I broke it down and all this stuff. Like, she doesn't seem to have any sort of problem for what she did on the, <laughs> on the presentation of this. She looked like hell. And everybody's sitting there vouching for her saying like, oh, you know, she looked like she's having fun. She looked like she's doing great. And I'm like, no, damn it. This is not what it is. It's like, there are really talented people out there. And not only is she making um, Australia look bad, she also makes you see like this shit is rigged and people make a mockery out of one of the greatest dance art form of all time. You know what I'm saying? And now you got people saying, well, breakdancing's not a sport anyway. How the fuck would you know? You never competed in a breakdance. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only thing that some of y'all know about breakdancing is, is probably Beat Street, Breaking, and then Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. And also, um, the closest thing that anybody got to breakdancing was Dance Dance Revolution back in the day. You know, and even then, you can see, like, you can compete. You look like a friggin' moron when you do it, yeah, but you can compete and tap and move all around, trying to match those arrows to the beat and the rhythm of things. But, you know, it was a, still a competitive, you know, a competitive game against somebody you knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's about the closest you got to breakdancing. And then there are those that actually break. Follow the beat, get down, you know, do the spins and all, popping and locking. Like, all of that stuff was an art form way back in the day, and it all got ruined because of this bitch. And then you come find out that she's actually a ballroom dancer, and her husband was one of the judges on the qualifying runs. So that right there just goes to show that she's not valid. You know what I'm saying? It, as a matter of fact, she's invalid. <laughs> Which is the same thing I just said. But it's like, when you think about it, instead of having people... But of course, she's going to get famous for it, because it was stupid... And it was broadcasted across to everybody else out here. And, you know, there are people that, once again, will not allow stupid people to learn any sort of infamy or remorse from all that shit and stuff. And, oh, she's got her 15 minutes of fame. I mean, some of y'all are still going on about the Hatua girl or something like that. Like, she was on, like, some sort of special they gave her. And turns out she wasn't really funny except for that moment when, when she did what she did. And it's like, well, like, look at this nonsense. You know? Stop elevating talentless fucking people. I mean, like, here's the thing. We're all learning skills and stuff like that, but once again, anybody who's derogatory, ridiculous, disgusting, and all this other stuff, they're getting elevated up, whereas, like, the people that are actually eat, sleeping, and breathing and doing all this cool stuff, like, yeah, even that 50-year-old DJ that can actually do transitions and cuts and actually can make some great beats, yeah, y'all make fun of that person, but you'll allow this shit. That's what's really annoying about it, you know? I, I just don't understand, like, why the hell we would, we, we do this too much, man. Or, oh, it's controversial for being controversial, and that's just stupid, too. But, hey, let me go ahead and run through your schedule right quick. You got the mini bikes happening now. You got the J-Man show happening tomorrow at 10. You might have something to see on J360 TV. I, I don't know yet, but it'll happen at 10. And for those of you that subscribe, which, as you should subscribe, you'll see how that works out. But remember that the submissions for Jams 98 are open. And this is J-Man signing off. You know, peace.